And uh, you can imagine that our fire engine has turned up at this block of flats. Looks to be burning quite well. And I'm sure my um, my courting couple are up there somewhere. is the 135 ladder, weighs about 110 kilograms and uh, on the top of every fire plants in Surrey. It takes four people to lift it off. Uh, we do have problems when it's windy and it is quite windy today. Um, I've, I've, you actually watch how the gust of wind can get hold of that ladder. When, once we take it off these rounds, it's got to be directed into the window. It's moved across slightly good, nice good pitch on that one. Um, we'll have a BA breathing apparatus crew going up now to get up there and uh, see how the casualties are. There's always four point apparatus wearers on every front line of cars in, in Surrey. Uh, they've gone in their breathing apparatus sets now. If you can imagine all the air we're breathing at the moment is squashed into this cylinder on their back. It's not oxygen, a lot of people think it's oxygen. If you breathe oxygen you'd be unconscious within two minutes. It's normal air that we're breathing, squashed into that cylinder and they'll have about 45 minutes worth of air, just like a sub aqua diver has. We wear this obviously, because as you were told this morning, smoke is the killer of any fire. Toxic gases, smoke, three breaths of a toxic gas is enough to kill you. It's cyanide, carbon monoxide, isocyanates, horrible stuff. Right, um, we've just been informed by my crew manager that the stairs, the stairs have totally collapsed on the third floor. So there's no way we're going to be able to get them down. We're going to have to get the aerial ladder platform, which is coming over your heads as we speak. Uh, we have two of these in Surrey, one at Guildford and one at Chertsey. They weigh in around about 26 tonnes and they will go 37 metres high. We've got a bit of water going into the second and third, uh, first floor, making sure that the fire is out. Uh, the ALP isn't only used for height rescues, it can actually lower the actual place to go five metres beneath the actual vehicle. So we can use it at motorway RPCs like coaches and cars and roll off the embankment. Uh, we can use it for lifting from mine shafts and things like that. What's going to happen now? If you look, the cage is not quite at the right angle to the building, and it's now going to be because it's slewing. It's slightly twisting around so that we've got a nice flat, stable platform for the naughty portion couple to get out on and to be brought back down and I'm sure we're going to be in for a little bit of trouble. What? As, you can, as you can see here, we have an operator at the base of the turret and one at the top as well. Depending on the type of incident, they can take over from each other. I would imagine at the moment that the top on operator is operating everything. He has to be pinpoint precision. So he doesn't crash into the building, he gets it exactly the right level. The height it's at at the moment is only it's just under half its normal working height. So as you can imagine, it will go up around about seven or eight stores. What's happening now is uh, the casualties are being brought into the cage. They have got working at height harnesses on. Um, they are secured for the minute they leave the building and they are put to the cage. 
I've got to get anything that's to happen, they are now clipped on. One of those naughty chaps up there is my uh, stepson. So I'll definitely be writing words as it really comes down. Because I don't recognise who he's with. Um, if you'd like to give me a round of applause, this is the first time they've done this. 